of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was once a church in the Deep South at the time of the Civil Rights Movement that was determined to remain a segregated, whites-only congregation. Their pastor, newly arrived, fresh out of seminary, was equally determined that the congregation should be integrated and welcome all regardless of race. The pastor invited his members, and in particular his congregational leaders, to study the subject from Holy Scripture. With patience and careful teaching, as St. Paul tells us, the pastor laid out the case from scriptural texts that all humans are equally created, equally redeemed, equally loved, and equally welcome in God's house. Finally, one exasperated church leader cried out, Pastor, get out from behind that Bible and fight like a man. St. Matthew writes, But when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Haven't we been through this before? It doesn't seem that long ago that we heard about another lawyer asking Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the master giving him a similar answer to what we just heard. But then, news probably traveled slowly between Galilee and Jerusalem. Likewise, at a critical moment in his earthly ministry, the Lord asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They repeated the rumors that were floating around. Some said Jesus was John the Baptist come back to life. Others said Elijah or another of the Old Testament prophets. But then he turned to them and asked, Who do you say I am? Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of God. Christ asked a similar question of the Pharisees and law experts except he moved the debate to familiar ground for them. The Law and the Prophets, what we know is the Old Testament. Get out from behind that Bible and fight like a man? Nope. Holy Scripture is what St. Paul calls the sword of the Spirit. And Christ intends to use it. The Evangelist writes, now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to him, He said to them, How is it then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord? Saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Nor from that point on did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Now, the Pharisees and law experts didn't care about who heard what before, where or when. They could spend all day debating which commandment was the greatest, or whose son was the Christ, or any other theological topic you pleased. 
theological debate was the great spectator sport of first century Judea. And Passover time in Jerusalem was the World Series, the Super Bowl, WrestleMania, the Olympics, the Kentucky Derby, and the Theological Symposium at Concordia Theological Seminary all rolled into one. Any Jewish male who had achieved his bar mitzvah was welcome to come to the temple and watch the learned rabbis debate. You probably remember St. Luke telling us that while Mary and Joseph and the rest of their relatives were on their way back to Galilee, 12-year-old Jesus was in the temple taking in the theological debates. These learned old masters weren't easily impressed, but they could see that this kid was going to be a contender. Then Mary and Joseph show up and bawl him out for worrying them sick. So he gently reminds them who he really is. Do you not know that I must be in my father's house? Likewise, in the temple all those years later, the Lord reminded his opponents who he really was. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. The late Dr. Harold Bowles, former professor at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne writes, that ultimately means the Father said to the Son. And again, as true God, Jesus is David's Lord. As true man, Jesus is David's son, descendant. Like Abraham, David believed in him who is true God and true man, Jesus Christ. The 12-year-old Christ was in the temple about his father's business. Now he was stepping into the ring to show these old masters what he could do. But he wasn't just entering the temple as another learned rabbi come to flex his theological muscles. He was entering the temple as its true Lord and Master. Christ's opponents were scripture experts. He is scripture's Lord. And as St. Matthew tells us, and no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone ask him any more questions. Christ and his opponents were also fighting for different stakes. The Pharisees and the lawyers were fighting for bragging rights. Christ was fighting for them. He was also fighting for you and me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. It was out of love for God and for us that Christ came to this earth, that he came to the temple, and that he went to the cross. Dr. Bowles writes, Jesus loved his enemies dearly and wanted to convert them. So great was his love for us that it took the Savior all the way to the cross. Get out from behind that Bible and fight like a man. Nope again. Christ died with the word of God on his lips, praying the Psalms like pious Jews were supposed to do as they were dying. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And again, into your hands, O Lord, I commit my spirit. Not only did he die on the cross, he died on the cross for us. And on Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. And thus, in accordance with David's words, did God the Father put his enemies under his son's feet. Sin death and the devil.
But not only did the Savior rise from the dead, he rose from the dead for you. Jesus asked the Pharisees, what do you think of the Christ? Well, here's a question for you. What does the Christ think of you? You know and I know that we are poor, miserable sinners. We just confess this. We have not loved God with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have justly deserved God's temporal and eternal punishment. But our Lord has taken that punishment for us. That cross and death were nothing other than what we deserved. The Lord of the temple went outside the walls of Jerusalem to offer the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. The altar was a cross. The high priest was Christ himself. The sacrificial victim was Christ himself as well. The curtain in the temple that kept sinners out of the Holy of Holies was torn in two. The father showed that he accepted this sacrifice by raising his son from the dead on Easter Sunday. My old seminary classmate, Pastor Jason Zerbel of Greenwood, Arkansas writes, do you want to know how much God cares about you and your salvation? Do you want to know how much God thinks about you? Look no further than this thing we call divine service. This thing we call in-person worship is a very big deal to the Christ of God. And again, your Lord Christ thinks so much of you and your sin and your salvation that he comes to you in the waters of holy baptism. He comes to bring his cruciform victory to you to wash away the guilt of your sin, to make you holy and righteous, to cover your sin and shame and clothe you in the white robes of his perfect righteousness. Look to this altar. This holy communion is what your Lord thinks of you. He comes to you in your very midst to feed you and nourish you with his medicine of immortality, his own victorious body and blood. That is a very big deal. And again, this is the Christ for you. What do you think about that? Get out from behind that Bible and fight like a man? Nope, nope, nopey, nopey, nope. So great is Christ's love for God and for us that he has taken up the sword of the Spirit to fight for us all the way to the cross and to the grave and the glorious resurrection and eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.